Question of the day. Suppose you're having lunch in a country that has fully implemented Sharia. As you're about to take another bite of your delicious falafel, you overhear a man at the next table saying, Muhammad was a black man. What do you do? Let's find out. By now, most people have heard of Sharia blasphemy laws. We've seen news reports about the penalty for criticizing or mocking Muhammad in places like Pakistan. Sharia blasphemy laws for criticizing Muhammad are based on Muhammad's response to critics. He ordered his followers to kill them. Let's look at a few examples in Ibn Asak, pages 550 to 551. This passage is about Muhammad conquering Mecca. The apostle had instructed his commanders when they entered Mecca only to fight those who resisted them, except a small number who were to be killed even if they were found beneath the curtains of the Kaaba. And we have a list of some of the people who had to be killed, along with their crimes. Another was Abdullah bin Qatal of Banu Taym bin Ghalib. He had become a Muslim, and the apostle sent him to collect the poor tax in company with one of the Ansar. He had with him a freed slave who served him. He was a Muslim. When they halted, he ordered the latter to kill a goat for him and prepare some food and went to sleep. When he woke up, the man had done nothing, so he attacked and killed him and apostatized. This guy was sentenced to death because he was a murderer and an apostate. But look at who's next on Muhammad's death list. He had two singing girls, Fartana and her friend, who used to sing satirical songs about the apostle, so he ordered that they should be killed with him. Muhammad sentenced these girls to death for making fun of him. Another was Al-Huwayrith bin Nuqayd bin Wahab bin Abd bin Qusay, one of those who used to insult him in Mecca. A little farther down the page we have, and Sarah, freed slave of one of the Banu Abdul Mutalib, Sarah had insulted him in Mecca. So, Muhammad repeatedly ordered his followers to execute people for making fun of him. Notice, however, that the passage doesn't say how these people insulted Muhammad. It didn't really matter. If you insulted Muhammad, you had to die. This is why it became the rule under Sharia to execute people who insult Muhammad. Obviously, you can insult Muhammad in a variety of ways, but I find it interesting to go through the Muslim sources and see what Muslims regarded as an insult punishable by death. And Muslim scholars came up with some interesting criteria. For instance, if you denied anything that Muhammad said about himself, you were calling him a liar, so you would be killed. If you said that he was ugly, you had to die. Muhammad's companions were so obsessed with their prophet being white that they wouldn't merely say, as they often did, that he was white. They would take things a step further by going body part by body part, describing the whiteness of his shins, and the whiteness of his thigh, and the whiteness of his leg, and the whiteness of his stomach, and the whiteness of his forearms, and the whiteness of his armpits, and the whiteness of his cheeks. If Muhammad's companions were this obsessed with Muhammad's epic whiteness, it was clearly an insult to falsely claim that he was black. And this is exactly what Muslim scholars concluded. Hence, we read in Qadi Ayad's Ash-Shifa, one of Islam's most popular and respected books on Muhammad's life and teachings, page 287, Ahmed ibn Suleiman, Sahnun's companion, said that whoever says that the Prophet was black is killed. The Prophet was not black. Calling Muhammad a black man was a death penalty. Muslim apologists respond to this quotation by pointing out that, in context, the penalties in this section of Ashifa are for saying something false about Muhammad. According to this interpretation, it's not that it's bad to be black, it's that Muhammad simply wasn't black, he was white. So a man who calls Muhammad a black man would be killed not because it's an insult to call someone black, but only because it's a crime to say something false about Muhammad. 
I see two problems with this response. First, the section of Ashifa in question is about whether someone who calls Muhammad a liar is an apostate or a heretic. This would mean that calling Muhammad black is calling him a liar, in which case our Muslim friends are either telling us that black people are liars, or they're telling us that Muhammad claimed not to be black. I can't think of a passage where Muhammad said that he's not black, so our Muslim friends must be claiming that black people are liars. Second, we find the same penalty mentioned in another section of Ashifa. We read on page 275, Ahmad ibn Abi Suleiman, the companion of Sahnun, said, anyone who says that the Prophet was black should be killed. This penalty is recorded in a section titled, The Judgment of the Sharia Regarding Someone Who Curses or Disparages the Prophet. So, if you call Muhammad a black man, you're either cursing him, or you're disparaging him, or both. Which is it, Muslims? Returning to our question of the day, if you're having lunch in a country that has fully implemented Sharia, and you overhear a man at the next table saying that Muhammad was a black man, what do you do? If you're a devout Muslim, you bear witness against him and have him beheaded for cursing and or disparaging your white prophet. More timeless wisdom from the religion that Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali and countless others who never bothered to read its sources converted to because of its wonderful but imaginary emphasis on racial equality. Until next time, terrorize that like button, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, and watch one of these videos. Muslims especially should want to learn everything they can about their prophet, who was whiter than Taylor Swift in a snowstorm, so that they can avoid being executed for denying it.